they like this water pretty warm it seems like they eat it better when it's warmer you know more consistent with what mom's milk would be so i got two to feed so i usually do one cup to a half a cup of this stuff here for them for one so now i'm gonna do two one cup of this we're gonna get a little mix up I know, I know, I know, I know. You're hungry, you're hungry. I get it. I just gotta feed y'all somehow at the same time here. Okay, come on, come on. Here, there's you, you. There you, here, 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 here. This is actually the smoothest it's ever been. The last couple times I've tried to do this, I just had to give up and just feed one at a time. I just had to feed one and then get the other one afterwards. Like one had to be satiated and then just move to the next one because uh, I just could not coordinate them. At the same time, they wanted to go towards the same bottle. But for the first time, they actually somehow managed to get a bottle in each one of their mouths so I can do this at the same time. I know the little girl didn't eat very good last night. She's the one on the left here. She didn't eat very good last night, so I know she, I knew she was going to be super hungry. You done already? You done? Here, here's more. You want more? You done? Good job, guys. The weather was warm enough earlier to uh, get the garden tilled up. Let's go check on our garlic over here that we planted a little while ago. Had some wind, so we got everything kind of everywhere. Yeah. Got our garlic coming up, doing pretty good. Good frost this morning, but it shouldn't mess with this garlic. So it's all popping up here. You see the little little green uh, stems coming up. I can just keep the chickens out of it, which I have attempted to do the fencing over here. Place this rubber across here. Now they can still fly over, but it's been keeping them out for the most part. So that tire works pretty good. Closes the gap and the fence that they've been getting through to go. And then I had a hole down at the bottom, so I just put the other slice of the tire across there to, to keep it, keep them from going in there. They're hungry, ready to be fed. All right, let's get you guys fed. They've been loving coming out here when it's wet. There's all these worms, you know, they come to the surface. They can really get through here. They can poke through the, the mud and stuff and they can grab those worms. And I've been <clears throat> kind of throwing like all their bedding and all the horses manure and the, just everything, all the manure and like, just like from doing the firewood or like the scraps from that, I've just been throwing in a big pile behind their chicken coop. And so when they get out, they've been headed to that and they've been uh, moving that around. And when they get it all scattered out, I'll just push it back into one pile again and my plan is that they're gonna kind of compost that down for me They're gonna throw it all around sift through it pick out all the little stuff They want and then I'll just keep piling it back up and hopefully it get hot enough that it's gonna actually compost down And uh, I'll have some pretty decent soil here uh, for next spring, but they're they're doing a pretty good job of that I don't have a very good system for it yet I want to there's a lot of great systems on YouTube that people have done um, where they'll sort of kind of take these gates or whatever these fences and they'll put all their mulch in there and then they'll they'll let it sit there for a little while and then they'll let the, the chickens kind of just mess it all up and then they'll pile it back put in another one and by the time it's done with those that system it's like just 100 awesome good compost and so <clears throat> i'd love to get to that point but i'm kind of doing it now but it's just going to be slower and it's just not as organized and it's just going to be all in one lump sum but it'll take a little bit longer but that's okay let's get these things fed they're uh doing a little browsing right now a little getting some grass and some new spring grass here any eggs one two three four five six seven seven eggs great they're laying a lot more eggs it's been it just went from being really cold to really warm really fast and they've just been really taking off laying so there's another one there they're ready for food you see they're following me in here yeah 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 i know i'm gonna get it for you Hey now. That never works. You do it every time and it literally never works. 
this red one, this red rooster is afraid of the black one. He gets bullied around, so I'd like to build a second coop and kind of keep the, the different breeds together so that I can collect the eggs and the eggs will be pure and we can do pure strain uh, birds and they won't be mixed. You are cold. It's kind of cold for you, isn't it? You are a pretty little thing, though. You're a good little girl. Come on. Come on. Good job. How'd you get in there? Can you get out? How'd you get in there? What in the world? Why would you go in there? Why would you go in there, sweetie? Plenty of food. Oh, yeah, plenty of food is just stuck up there. There you go. So underneath the rabbit cages, we have these big uh, wooden pallets that are absolutely full of rabbit droppings as well as uh, their leftover feed and um, their straw, their bedding and stuff, it's all falling down in here. Um, so I'm, I've been grabbing some of this really, really, really good rabbit manure. And I've been <clears throat> trying to keep as much hay out of it as possible uh, because, you know, it does have some seeds and stuff in it. But for the most part, this is pretty good stuff. And I could compost it down and that would be terrific and all. And I, I do throw a little bit in my worm bin so the worms can kind of break it down and make vermicast. Uh, but what I've been doing is I've been going through here, gathering a bucket or so. <clears throat> and I'm going to start doing this even more so when I actually have plants in here. But I'm just trying to get it this ground nice and fertilized, but I've just been going through here and just chucking this rabbit poop out all over the garden. So it has time to kind of soak in there, break down. Now rabbit poop is a cold manure, so it's really fantastic. You can throw it right next to a plant. You know, you do that to something, say like chicken manure, and it'll actually, it'll, <clears throat> it'll, they say burn the plant, you know, cause it's so much nitrogen right next to the plant. And it actually, it'll actually burn them. So you don't want to do that to a lot of different other manures. But rabbit manure, it's called a cold manure. So you can just throw that right next to the plant and it does an absolute terrific job of just right there on the spot fertilizing them immediately. You don't have to break it down anymore. It's like <clears throat> basically these little pellets, you know, right here, these are just like little fertilizer pellets. They just throw them next to the plant, throw them in the garden, whatever, and you can fertilize your uh, garden that way. That is why you'll see my rabbit cage right by my garden. Now, I don't know if I'll always do it like this, but for now it seems to be working pretty well because I can just take that manure from my rabbits and just toss it right on the garden. I mean, there's no uh, step in between or anything like that with all the other animals, the chickens and the horse, and well, I guess we have sheep now. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna be taking all that manure and then I'm gonna be putting it into a compost pile. So there's gonna be some manual labor involved. And so I'm gonna be having to gather it all up put it in one spot and then I'm gonna be composting it down, you know, and so there's a good little process that goes on. That's why all the, the animals are all back there. Um, the animals like that are all back there. And that's why we have the rabbits right here. So, because I can just immediately throw those right onto the garden. Um, so eventually I would like to move my rabbits into a permanent barn. And so I'll have to come up with a slightly different system that'll probably be a little bit more uh, manual. But <clears throat> for now, this is working pretty well on a small scale. So I guess it's been probably almost a year now, but uh, last thing we have left to feed is Pop-Tart. Pop-Tart's what we named our horse. Uh, when we got our horse, uh, he didn't even want to take any steps. He was just really overgrown, um, just really had a lot, of, a lot of hoof problems. So if I can find him, he's getting around pretty good now. Where are you at, buddy? Not in his stall. Oh, there you are. Okay, so he has this one foot here that's kind of taken off that we need to do something with. But otherwise, the rest, the rest of his hooves look much better than when he, uh, when we first got him. So he's still, he's probably gonna have problems his whole life. We'll have to keep up with it. But we've had, you know, ferry over. He's been getting, um, you know, clipped and taken care of and gotten lots of hay and uh, stayed away from grains and the sweet stuff, which he really likes the sweet stuff. No more corn or anything like that for him. Just basically your, your green grass out here in the pasture 
and then hay from the hay field and it's done pretty good you can see he does have this one here that i will need to address here pretty soon that's still we're still fighting it uh it still wants to you know bend upwards and founder but for the rest of his hooves, they look way better than they used to. And he's getting around better. And that's the important thing is that he's happy. You know, he's getting around a lot better. So well, there's not much to do here. Just make sure the guy has fresh water. He's got good pasture full of grass. Uh, and then we clean out his stall pretty periodically. Get all that good manure that he produces to put into our garden. But he's doing really, really good. I've even seen him, you know, if you, if you have a bucket or something, and you know i'm going to feed the chickens or whatever and it shakes and he it makes that rattling sound he'll still, he'll be galloping towards you because he thinks you know that you're going out there to feed him or whatever but you know we got some minerals and stuff but for the most part we try to keep away from the like high sugar stuff um so that we can prevent that from happening and getting worse on the other on the other hooves so i'll have the uh farrier come over we'll we'll take care of this um get that back but this is something that we we have to do you know all the time it grows really really fast it's been this right one uh right front foot and it's just really really has given him trouble and he's gonna need uh trimmed on all these other ones as well too so that'll be all right we'll get him taken care of but he's just come a long ways and he's doing really well out here grab some hay for the rabbits grab some hay for pop tart we'll be Pretty well done with chores. Then I get to go uh, work on other fun projects around the farm. And I do have some work related duties that I have to do today as well. So we'll go take care of that, get our projects done. And uh, this is life on the farm. It's a lot. The reward is not monetary. There is a reward to it. You know, it really is a satisfying work. Being out here with the animals, having lots of animals, you know, if you love animals, not simple. It's not the simple life, I can guarantee you that, but uh, it is satisfying work. And I, uh, I don't know, wherever I, I am, even when I lived in town, I find myself having farm animals or something I gotta take care of. I don't know why. Um, I tell myself, you know, it would be easier if I didn't have all this stuff. I could go do more vacations and run around more and not have to worry and have a lot more time. But no matter what, somehow animals come to me, just like the sheep. We had no inclination whatsoever. Had That was not even on my radar to have a sheep. Um, but the neighbor called and asked, if we wanted to take care of a, a sheep that was orphaned, I said, you know what? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we've been bottle feeding it now for a couple weeks. A couple days ago, the other sheep showed up. Uh, while I was at work, my wife sent me a picture and was like, oh, am I seeing double vision or is that there's another one in there? And sure enough, we have two sheep now. So we have a male and a female and uh, they are from the same herd, but they're not brother and sister. They could uh, eventually uh, breed, I guess, if we want to take it this far. I, I don't have any plans right now. I don't know what to do with sheep. I know they produce wool. Um, but I know that's a long process and I know zero about it. I know about as much in astrophysics as I do about how to make sheep's wool into a sweater. But we, um, we have them. We, we're taking care of them and, you know, we kind of enjoy them. They are, they are needy every four hours feeding them and getting up in the middle of the night feeding them. They got to have the bottle all the time. They, they make a mess. They're just kind of, uh, kind of needy. But you know what? I kind of like having them. Hey guy, anyway guys, thanks for watching this vlog and if you know how YouTube works, you got to get to a thousand subscribers, you got to get to 4,000 watch hours, a, that is a ton, that is a lot, so it's a lot of hard work.